You know who did a whole lot of talking yesterday following up a TV interview that got into police violence in America with a campaign rally in the Rose Garden that was billed as a press conference. It, it was a lot. Take a look. We saved tens of thousands of lives, but we actually saved millions of lives by closing. And frankly, if we didn't test, you wouldn't have all the headlines because we're showing cases. The Biden-Sanders agenda is, agenda is the most extreme platform of any major party nominee. Biden's gone radical left. Why are African Americans still dying at the hands of law enforcement in this country? And so are white people. So are white people. What a terrible question to ask. So are white people. More white people, by the way. More white people. Well, I, you know, this is a lot to unpack here, but I, I guess it will come as a surprise to white people to hear that they are being killed more often, even though this Harvard study seems to have found that blacks are three times as likely to be killed uh, by police than whites, and one in every black man can expect to die at the hands of police. This, I mean, so I, I'm not sure what he's looking at, but what do you take away from this, Joy? Well, first of all, white people are not being killed because they're white. Okay, in, in Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. Jews were being killed because they were Jewish. Specifically, it has nothing to do with anything but their religion or their color. That's what we're talking about. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, here's what I take away from this thing. I watched it. He's unraveling. He is unraveling. His incompetence and, and ludicrous and r remarks and lying are now coming out loud and clear to almost everybody. You know, for three and a half years, he has been able to cover it up because he inherited a good economy from Obama, and people let him slide. But now, in this pandemic, all the sores are showing, all the sores, and he is um, scared. He is scared. I mean, he mentioned Biden right. 30 times in this speech. He made sure to throw in Hunter Biden and how there are fraudulent mailmen who were going to uh, cheat and mail in voting. He is losing it. He's losing it. And um, right. the polls, even Fox polls, are driving him nuts. Before I go from this, I just want to give a shout yeah. out to my cameraman and my sound guy, also known as my husband, Steve, because <laughs> it's his birthday today. So happy <laughs> birthday, darling. Happy oh, birthday, Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. Your check is in the mail, Steve. Uh -huh. you, should be getting, you should be getting battle pay for this. <laughs> and he's dying your hair, so Professor dying. Steve. He's dying your hair. And Steve is not, may I just yes, add and dying that your Steve hair. is not. Not unraveling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good thing. Son, you, you heard him claim that more white people are <laughs> killed by police violence, which, again, I think is going to come as a shock to white people. I don't think they are aware of this. Uh, but you know that, yeah. this, <laughs> that yeah. the stats tell a different story. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, and as you said, as you said, Whoopi, I mean, you know, most people do know the stats. They know that black people are, are killed at a much higher rate uh, by, bless you, uh, by uh, police than, than white people. It's three times the rate, actually. And black people only 13% mm -hmm. of the population. And so, of course, white people are killed more by police because there are more white people in the population so it's really about a percentage it's about the rate of the killing and and I, it just goes to right. show you that those people that are talking about Trump's um, uh, you know uh, first step act and the fact that he is the criminal justice president and the fact that he is so keyed in to the black community it's just not true it's a farce he doesn't care about um, these issues that are affecting the black community. He doesn't care about the Black Lives Matter movement. He really doesn't. And, and the other thing that you've heard him say very often is that why don't black people um, talk about black on black crime? And I hear that so much in, in, in conservative circles. And what people need to understand is that, you know, homicides are intra racial. When you look at white on white crime, it's 84%. Right? Homicides, white people kill white people. But that term yeah. white on white crime is never used. So why is black on That's black true. crime used? I, I just I don't understand it. Yeah. It drives me it's, nuts uh, yeah. as someone on, who's been involved on. in the law enforcement here, here community my entire career. Yeah. yeah. 
Megan, what, what, <laughs> anyway. what were the optics? <laughs> I don't even know what to, where to start with this question. No, she's where right, were the, though. What, like, it, it is an important yes, point that like, most violence, that racial violence happens interracially between white on white people, black on black people. It actually, you're, you're completely right, and I don't understand why it's not something that's spoken about in, in, all, in all sections of our society. So it's a really valid point. Um, I watched it yesterday, too, uh, the Rose Garden speech, and what to just pull back on, on on that part of it before his comments about um, uh, police officers. He, it was a basically a campaign rally speech in the Rose Garden. And it's interesting to me that I think mm -hmm. he and the administration have probably come up with a uh, concerted plan because he can't do rallies. He just canceled his event that was supposed to happen in New Hampshire, I believe, this weekend because there's going to be, they said, weather issues, I think possibly a hurricane. And um, he has elected to use the platform of the Rose Garden to attack Hunter Biden, to talk about things that you would traditionally only see in a campaign rally. But underneath that, there was also some interesting <coughs> policy. He started hitting China extremely hard and then brought up the fact that both Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz have recently been sanctioned by China for criticism of them. And I actually think if he had the discipline that any other candidate has to hit China in this moment, in the, as you said, Joy, in the uh, coronavirus pandemic moment, it's actually something that is statistically very impactful and very effective among Democrats as well. But the problem is, and it's a huge frustration for, uh, you know, I think any any student of politics is that he has a lot of opportunities here that he could be using, but he just can't not stop himself from making these stupid, undisciplined comments that become hot topics on shows like this. And I'm at the point where if, if he and his team just can't in any way bring out any kind of cohesive message, maybe you should just wrap it up. Because there's some interesting things to say about China right now <laughs> and talking about white police officers getting or white people getting shot right now is, right. is not only tone deaf, but it's just, I just don't understand. And will you excuse me? I'm extremely tired today. I apologize. A, a, a bookcase fell in my attic and woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning, so I apologize. But like watching it yesterday, any other Republican candidate would have done this very well, but we have someone who can't even discipline themselves in three seconds. And then it's just frustrating to watch. It's why uh, electing a complete outsider with no political experience in the swamp will probably end up making him a one-term president.